Charis TV. I have the grace. You can't stop me. Luke 12. We read from verse 35. Luke 12 from verse 35. Luke 12. Luke 12. From verse 35. Verse 35. Let your loins be guarded about and your lamps burning. And be ye yourself like unto men looking for their Lord when he shall return from the marriage feast, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may straightway open unto him. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching, or him doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall get himself, and make them sit down to meet, and shall come and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, and, in, and if in the third, and find them, so blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what hour the thief was coming, he would have watched and not have left his house to be broken through. Be you also ready for in an hour that ye think not the Son of Man cometh. No. For in an hour that ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. And Peter said, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even unto all? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall set over his household, to give them their portion of food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I say unto you that he will set him over all that he hath. But if that servant shall say in his heart, My Lord, delayeth his coming, and shall begin to bid the men servants and maid servants, and to eat and drink and to be drunken. The Lord of the servants shall come in a day when he is expected not, and in an hour when he knoweth not, and shall cut him asunder and appoint his portion with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his Lord's will and made not ready nor did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. And to whomsoever much is given, of him shall be required. And to whom they commit much of him, they will ask the more. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's read verse 48 in Amplified Bible. I want you to listen in Amplify. Abraham verse 48. But the one who did not know it and did things worthy of a beating will receive only a few lashes from everyone to whom much has been given. Much will be required. And to whom they entrusted much, of him they will ask all the more. Today I want to talk about your responsibility as a Christian. Just write your responsibility as a Christian. Not long I learned that is responsibilities that judges us. If you are a Christian, your response matters. Our Lord Jesus Christ here 
He gave a parable, but he was speaking. And the disciples were not understanding. But there are things, number one, he was saying. He warned them. But they must be ready always. Because they don't know the time. They must be ready always. They must be ready always. They don't know the time of judgment. Number two, he gave an illustration and said that, you know, always when the one who judges come, you have been given responsibility. You must know that you are appointed on the set times. According to the Jews, they, they had three times. The first one, the second one, and the third watch. They called them the first one, the second one, the third watch. In other words, they change according to the to the the to their post. The first watch, they've been given. They knock off the second one. They knock off the third one. So, according to that night, so Jesus was saying, if you know when the thief, the time of the thief that he will come on this time, you will carry on watching. But if not, how is it? The, the thief will come in the time you are not expecting. In other words, a Christian must keep on doing because he has been given a certain time. And the time he has been given, soon, it can be given someone. We are living this life here. But it's possible that someone replace another. So if you have been given a task, you must fulfill your responsibility. So if now you have been given a task, and you become like a master who has been given a chance. When the master delay, you begin to change the character. Listen to this. In the responsibility that you have been given, it's only the delay of the master when he comes to your accounts that it can affect your focus I don't know if you are hearing it let, let me say it again if you have been given a task and then you have been given responsibilities the one who is supposed to hear the accounts of your responsibility. If he can delay to come, it's Uta. possible for you to lose focus. Many people have lost focus because after they've been given responsibilities, they felt that they have got time enough to exercise the authority. Like this one, he felt that he's supposed to treat people who are under him the way he wants. And this is how he missed to know the type of his coming. And this is how he missed to know the type of his coming. When you lose focus, you are bound to lose your responsibility. And you will never know the time of his responsibility. Many times, when God set responsibilities on us, if we are faithful to them, 
it will be easy for us to dissect the times. Can you just tell your neighbor what I said? If God gives you responsibility and you are faithful to them, it will become easy for you to dissect the times. You will know that it seems as if my time is finishing. When Jesus was faithful to his responsibility, no one could kill him on the cross. Because Jesus could just be healed on the cross. He, he, cross. he just pray a prayer. And say, It is finished. From there, he said, to your hands, I put He knew because he was faithful to his responsibility. We Christians, we cannot be Christians unless we have responsibilities that shows we are Christians. Hallelujah. Amen. You Christians, you cannot be Christians unless you have responsibilities to be called Christians. Let me show you verse 48. I was talking about. It says, Whatever, whoever is given much. Much is required from you. That is responsibility. You know, I've been sharing this this week. I said, I was telling some people that if you cry to be rich, the responsibility will be very serious. And the moment you fail to those responsibilities, it's possible you can be replaced. Because you're not just given to be rich. God wants to do something through you. People must understand though you are rich, but you are different with us. Tell them, though, though you are rich, you can be different with others. You can be poor and be different with others. I wish many of you don't cry for bigger responsibilities. I wish you don't cry for bigger responsibilities. Because you know you won't be able to execute the things that are needed in those, in those principles you have been given. I don't know if you are hearing that. Look at Matthew. If we read from 19, 19 chapter 19, we read 26, uh, 16 to 26. 16 to 26. I want to show you another responsibility. Ask somebody, do you have responsibilities? Because some of you, you are here, but even when you are not around, you are as good as you are not here. I say, Matthew, what? Matthew 19. 19. 16 to 26. 16 to 26. And behold, came, one came to him and said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why, ask, why askest thou me concerning that, that which is good? Can you just read with Amplified? This is in Old English. And Let's, someone came to him and said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do to obtain eternal life, yes. eternal salvation in Mosaic Kingdom? 
Jesus answered, Why are you asking me about what is essentially good? There is only one who is essentially good. But if you wish to enter into eternal life, keep the commandments. He said to Jesus, Which commandments? And Jesus answered, You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. That is, unselfishly seek the best or higher good for others. The young man said to him, I have kept all these things from my youth. What do I still lack? Jesus answered him, If you wish to be perfect, that is, have the spiritual maturity that is accompanied godly, that is accomplished godly character, which no oral or ethical defenses. Go and sell what you have and give the money to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come follow me. In other words, become my disciple believing and trusting in me and walking the same path of life that I walk. But when the young man heard this, he left grieving and distress, for he owned much property and he had many possessions, which he treasured more than his relationship with God. Jesus said to his disciple, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, it is difficult for a rich man who clings to possessions and status as security to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man who places his faith in wealth and status to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were completely astonished and bewildered, saying, Then, who can be saved from the wrath of God? But Jesus looked at them and said, With people, as far as it depends on them, it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. You know, when Jesus was approached by this proud young man, his Christianity was based on what he has achieved. And then whatever he achieved, he wanted to maintain it to prove a point. Therefore, number one thing is he was, his focus was on the outward than inside. I don't know if you are hearing that. His focus was outward than inside. To extend that he challenged Jesus. Jesus, what yes. do you what is it that I can do King to be in your kingdom? But the painful thing that Jesus said is he tried to show that due to the I mean all these riches around him he could not see his weakness. In fact Jesus was taking him there and said you see, you are very rich now. And these riches blindfold you. Not to be able to see your own weakness in your heart. What you have to do is to maintain and to prove a point that your Christianity is based on your progress without responsibility. Because many people, when they have all these things, and they have not allowed God to touch their heart while they have them, 
they lose their responsibilities they fight to maintain what they have so Jesus gave him a command he said Okay, I can see what you have done, but can you just go and sell everything? Come in other words, you are following that will humbling you as a Christian. Will need you to be responsible to the people who are poor. Take everything, these things are to understand that the weakness is you have got a problem. You, you cannot share. You don't have love. You don't have love to others. Yes, people are seeing you very rich. Sell everything, come and follow. And the Bible said, this man was... Bible so so obey the voice of a command. The commandment was you can follow me. If you you say, was supposed oh. to have obeyed the command of God and become a true Christian. And follow Jesus. Listen. I shall just go and sell everything. I get it among God must tell you what to say. In this man, because his weakness was the thing to which makes him to fail to follow Jesus Christ and also to have the responsibilities Jesus could say it's better you become responsible you take care of others and you come and follow. Listen, I want to tell you this. Think about selling everything. This guy said, ah, it's impossible. Even the disciples were hearing that they say, it's impossible to be saved. But, you know, Jesus gave an example because in, in Jerusalem by that time there was a gate there was a needle some walls where you can see outside and the people were saying you can go through but a camel cannot go through it was not a needle of, I mean a hole of a needle it was a hole it was a hole a, 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 a hole of a needle and a camel could not go but, but camel go so he said yes it's impossible for a rich man I mean to be, to be like I mean to obey God to follow me to be responsible it will be like a camel it has one like camela failing to go through. I capano lo se na kali shubalela. When the disciple has said that, it means this. But Jesus said, "Just no, it's only when you rely on God." Kera fela wena wii stayle kamudim. If you know that your riches are coming from God, it will be simple for you to be responsible for it. It will be simple for you to obey. I don't know if you're hearing me. Can I tell you this? Today, our Christianity is based on what we have. Can you just tell anybody? What you have does not make you a Christian. What you have does not make you a Christian. What you have does not make you a Christian. What if God said, go and sell your Does your Christianity start from inside? Your focus must be inside before the outward attitude. Be we are busy with what we kind of are doing. We are busy with what kind of a job we are working. But we are not busy with our inward. Because God, if him to work inside us. It will be easy for us to be flexible to his responsibilities. It will be easy for us to be by him. Many of us today, we are 
Look, we cannot even accommodate anyone in our. Are khono lo accommodate go ba tshe motho mongwe ra ba le yena ka ra dinto tsa rena. Because our hearts here. Ka ba ndipelo tsa rena. Are full of things. Di te chika di lo. Things of the past. Dinto tsa khale. We look at others we cannot. Re le bela ba bangwe re nana re palwa le ka go bela ba bangwe ngwe tshela ba bangwe. To our responsibility. Re palelo ma ikarabelo nga rena. Tsa so say hey. Ngo go tshe motho le nga phuru wena. It is your responsibility to others. Ke ma ikarabela ga ngwe re wena nna o to o. To take care of others. O re o tshie. To help others, become the hand of God. And if you do that, God will lift you and do more. Can you say Amen? Amen. Look at this verse. Matthew 5:38. Matthew 5:38. Because I'm just giving you long verses that. You know, for the verses that you're telling. If you depend on God, I will now guide you to take a move. It will be easy for you to respond to this call. Etla ba bu nolo wena wara ba habi cha. Matthew five thirty eight. Matthew five verse thirty eight. Our response. My karabel wari na. To those who commit evil to us. Oba bari dirang chedi mpi. The Bible says we must response with good. Response chwa araba kachi bozi. With good. Jadi mperi Arabe kajadi vuzi. It's what is written there. Kintu ingwa julu ingwe sengi yo. There are many people who persecute. Unaliba ba ngoba leba taisha ba sumarela ba kisha mtu kuba ba. If you can read verse thirty-eight, read thirty-eight, mama. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth, meaning punishment that fits the offense. Verse thirty-nine. But I say to you. Do not resist an evil person who insults you or violates your rights. But whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other toward him also. Carry on. Simply ignore insignificant insults or trivial losses and do not bother to retaliate maintaining your dignity, your self-respect, your, po your poise. If anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let him have your coat also. For the Lord repays the offender. And whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asked of you and do not turn away from him who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor like fellow men as, and they hate your enemy. But I say to you, love that is unselfishly seek the best or higher good for your enemy and pray for those who persecute you so that you may show yourself to be the children of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on those who are evil and on those who are good and makes the rain fall on the righteous those who are morally upright and the unrighteous the unrepented those who oppose him for if you love only those who love you what reward do you have can you stop there mama i want us to look at this verse with caution this verse is with caution here the Bible is talking about you stopping an offense. If you someone fight you, many people think when you are failing to retaliate, it's because you are guilty. But it's because of these scriptures. Your responsibility is to stop an offense. Your responsibility is to stop an offense. Okay, look here. What if you retaliate? And you did the worst of what you did. Who is wrong there? That's what the Bible says. That's why the Bible says. With good. I don't know if you're hearing that. 
Many of us will, will love to retaliate to prove our innocence. And this makes us guilty. Many of us will love to retaliate to prove our innocence. But this makes us guilty. Many of us we don't know that if we can be silent we give the fight to the one who's due. We know the battle belongs to God and he will fight for us. But if we retaliate we bring evil by evil. I don't know if you're hearing me. That is not our responsibility. Christians are those people that even when they have right to defend themselves they will rather withdraw. I don't know if you're hearing me. That's what says, hey, I know my rights as a Christian. That's why I normally withdraw. If we defend ourselves that is not your responsibility. I love Jesus when he said, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give God what belongs to God. A Christian is not supposed to fight by himself. You know, not long I found that the things that the world speak about the Bible call it blessing. When persons say all kinds of things, it's a blessing to you. You are supposed to say amen. When somebody clap, you say amen. It says, even if they spitefully use you, you know, spitefully use you is this. Accompanying me. And the Bible says, do more and accompany them. More. It's, it's spitefully using you. There are some people that when they want to reach their goal, they spitefully use you. Accompany them. Be stupid. Accompany them. But he who watches, he who cannot slumber, there will be a time where you will respond. Can you just stand in your responsibilities and stop taking the seat of God? Uh, let me give an example. He will rob you money today. He will rob you money today. We'll finish money next year. We won't have the same money forever. Here, the Bible is not saying you must not depend in law. It's talking about an offense. The Bible is talking about an offense. Because offense can send you to hell. It can affect your responsibility. There are some people who cannot stop you where you are going. Don't have offense because of Because there's nothing they can do to you. Just forgive them and carry on. They cannot add anything to your life. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know what is happening to you. But there's no one who can stop you. No one can block you. No one can overcome you. Just move on without offense. And you will make it. So overcome evil with God. With good. And the Bible says that's how you will win them to God. Many people are trying you. Don't forget your responsibilities. Don't forget your responsibilities. You become a Christian by your response. I don't know if you're hearing that. Second Timothy. Timothy Second Timothy. Two twenty. 
chapter 2 verse 20 if you read this way, it will help you. Because the Bible says in 1 Peter 4, 12. 4, verse 12. To 19. When people say all kinds of things to you, it's because the spirit of glory is in you. And also James 2, verse 18 to 26. Jacob 2, 18 to 26. It shows that by faith we will see the works of obedience. So your response to the word is the works of obedience. Therefore, you are showing that by responsibilities the works you show. Second Timothy 2 20 verse 20 can you just read there? It talks about in the house. There are many vessels. But if you want to be a vessel of honor, pledge yourself. Can you just read verse 20, 20? 20. Now, in a large house, there are not only vessels and objects of gold and yes. silver, but also vessels and objects of wood and of earthware. Yes. And some of honorable, noble, and good use, and some for dishonorable, ignorable, and common use. 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself for these things, which are dishonorable, disobedient, sinful, he will be a vessel for honor and sanctified, set apart for a special purpose, and useful for the master, prepare for every good work. Yeah, carry on to 26. Run away from youthful lust, pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord out of pure heart, but have nothing to do with foolish and ignorant speculations. Useless disputes over unidentifiable stupid controversies. Since you know that they produce strife and give birth to quarrels, the servant of the Lord must not participate in quarrels, but must be kind to everyone, even tempered, preserving peace, and he must be skilled in teaching patience and tolerant when wronged. He must correct those who are in opposition with courtesy and gentleness in the hope that God may grant that they will repent and be led to the knowledge of the truth and accurately understand and welcoming it and that they may come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil having been held captive by him to do his will. If we read verse 21 there, we are in the house here, but we are under a training. We must know how to be responsible. Purging ourselves or to set ourselves aside for every good work for the Lord. Uh, here, you know, this verse is telling me that when God wants to choose someone, he will test everyone. His eyes are in him. His house. He will look at all Christians and check if they are fit for this. This kind of responsibility. Listen, any responsibility you are given, you don't get it for free. You don't get it for free. You must reach a level where you are. Tested. Whether you become suitable to or we are Chanel or na Kaudira Singh. I love when the Bible says Kirata Bible Haibola Lairi. The servant talks about the servant here. 
He says the servant. Well, let me just show you the verse. 24. And the lost servant must not strive. He didn't say prophet. He prophet. It says, it didn't say apostle. apostle. He says, you are chosen. You are chosen to show your responsibility. So you are not supposed to strive. No, you have to be gentle towards all. Because by your lifestyle, you are teaching. Okay, look at this verse 25. It says, in meekness, correcting them that oppose themselves. In other words, when you are living a Christian life, you will meet, you'll meet the confused ones. I'm worried that many of you, when you meet the confused ones, you okay. don't know what to say. They confuse you the worst. You need to correct them in a gentle way. I don't know if you're hearing that. Because also remember, they might be there to dilute you. you, set, you set yourself aside. For the certain assignment, to execute or when out of honor and my caravel was funny. Listen, I can give you example before God blesses you. I'm telling you now, I want to tell you this before He gives you 10 million. God will check you. He will check you. You come here and say, ah, this one. Two rand. Five rand. Seven rand. Three rand. Three rand. Three rand. I don't know if you're hearing me. He reaches and no, if I give this one, this one will make my house to stay. Because your responsibilities are so important before God. As somebody says, what are you doing for God? What are you doing for God? Ask your neighbor. What are you doing for God? Listen. Your doings of God. 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 Will promote you to another responsibility. If you are doing nothing, you are about to be stagnant. Some of you, you are challenged to stop what you are doing. But tell yourself, no, 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 no. I won't strive. But I will miss also the confused ones. I will tell them the truth. And correct them in the right way. And try to show them. Don't ever think you can change everyone. You can change everyone. But do your responsibilities. Tell them, don't ever think you can change everyone. But just do your responsibilities. Let me show you the last verse we have read there. You say what there? But I just want to take you back. Last verse. Verse 26. You say what? Read. And that they may not come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. Can you see that if you set yourself aside, this is another work that God can give you. The son of man, Ramoto, has manifested to destroy the works of God. You can destroy it physically. You are supposed to be responsible. That's what it says. When you see something that needs to be corrected, don't forget your responsibility. It might be happening because you are the one who is responsible. Don't be confused by those who are confused. 
execute what is needed. Be a Christian. God bless you. Keep watching Charis TV.